If you happen to drive an American muscle car, Mustang, Camaro, and Charger specifically, to attend a coffee and cars open car meet in Houston, Texas, this could be you. Hey, we don't serve their kind here. What? Your cars. They'll have to wait outside. We don't want them here. What the fuck? Welcome back. JR here in the Dirty Daily, sitting in rush hour traffic. And when the Google algorithm put this road and track article in my phone feed about a week or so ago, I thought I was in Bizarro World. American muscle cars banned from an open car meet. Announcement came from an Instagram post from the organizers of Coffee and Cars in Houston, Texas. Note to future self, screenshot that post and put it here because I don't know the exact verbiage off the top of my head, but but the high level is this. As a response to something that happened at the November 4th meet, these American muscle cars are temporarily banned from coffee and cars events. Now, if you haven't heard about this up until now, it's probably scratching your head. What the hell's going on out here? So besides the road and track article, I went and hunted down a couple of more write-ups and each of them had a little bit more information than the rest, but still not a whole lot. The ongoing problem has been and get this, excessive engine revving and burnouts. How dare you? Now, to be fair, there's not a ton of information about what happened other than it's been an ongoing issue. And their concerns are valid. They don't want to get shut down. They say they have big surprises for future events. And they're trying to avoid the alternative of turning them into invitation only event. But assuming there was an incident, what could it have possibly been to be so bad to ban what's probably the largest segment of vehicles attending your car meets and simultaneously not bad enough to not have it included as the information in the article. So because there's not a lot of context behind this, I'm just going to have to cast my opinions in a broad generalization. So keep that in mind. I mean, I don't get to go to a lot of car meets, but in my limited experience, excessive engine revving and burnouts, well, let's just say, don't be surprised if they happen. I will concede to the point on the burnouts. There have been plenty of instances where they've gone too far. There's one particular model car that has developed a reputation for bad things happening when they behave badly, leaving a car meet. I'm not gonna say what that model is, but you know which one I'm talking about. Just based on the information provided. Pop, 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 pop. Go get them, go. But based on the information provided, or lack of specifics, a ban across the board of Mustang, Camaro, and Charger seems very heavy-handed and, in my opinion, unnecessary. Oh, and something else that was mentioned in more than one article is people saying that the exotic cars do the same thing. But you can't ban an exotic car because, you know, that's the eye candy. That's the big draw to get people to come out to the event. I'm willing to bet that the worst offenders are well-known locals in the Houston car scene. And it seems like it should be pretty easy to enforce something on those particular individuals. This kind of heavy-handed enforcement, in my opinion, is just as easily something that could get a lot of people to boycott your event. The other option they're toying around with is probably just as bad, if not worse. You make what was an open car meet event, invitation only, then who decides what cars are worthy? What cars get invited? Does it turn into the roller coaster at the fair and there's a sign out front of the event that says, your car must be worth at least this much to attend? Fuck that. So then what is the solution? Well, first and most obvious, you gotta stop doing stupid stuff with these things. If engine revving is making small children and small animals cower in fear, first, they probably should be wearing earplugs anyway. Second, maybe the straight pipe guys just ought to tone it down a bit. Alternatively, people's sensibilities shouldn't be so easily offended when going to something that you know has loud cars. And then back on the burnouts, there's just no other way to put it. You gotta stop being stupid. <laughs> One of the articles featured a post from a, a Houston area Mopar group. Maybe it's just one guy in the group and he was showed him doing an excessive burnout around an intersection, you know, really long. It was like 20 seconds or something. I don't know. That's too much, but there may be another option. I think handling it in the most American capitalist way possible could be the answer. We know there's people that are gonna wanna do burnouts. 
That's why at the exits of all these car meets, a lot of people gather with their phones to shoot video of people doing burnouts. Sell burnout tickets. For 10 or $20, somebody can do a burnout, the money goes to charity, everybody wins. When someone leaves a car meet, they hand their ticket to the attendant, police stop traffic, providing the venue has a suitable exit, traffic stop, burnout happens, everybody gets the video they were gonna get anyway. As long as there's a reasonably safe way to accommodate it at the meet. And don't forget to sign that ironclad waiver. You break your car, it's your fault. You break your car into something, well, that's your fault too. But if you live in the Houston area, or you've attended these events, and you know more about what's happening, please let me know in a comment below, because I wanna be correct when I throw these opinions around, or at least as correct as possible. And being honest, I'd be surprised if no one else has thought of the burnout ticket idea or something similar. If you know of that being employed somewhere, let me know in a comment also. I'm genuinely curious. But thank you for all your support. Until next time, I'm JR, and I am out.